there was a time when it was acceptable to write a story where it doesn't feature a single female character. Um, that is not today. Hobbit star Evangeline Lilly talks about her newly created character, Feisty Alf Torre. I think that's the way we say it. That's after eight. <laughs> That they were tired of staring at each other's hairy faces and smelling each other's stinky bo, and they they were like, oh. <laughs> Hobbit star Evangeline Lilly dissing the dirt about life on set with all those blokes. She's a sword swinging she elf that steals the show in The Hobbit: The Desolation of Smaug. But Evangeline Lilly accepts some fans may take exception to her new role. Joanna Hunkin sat down with the star in Los Angeles. It will not end here. With every victory, this evil will grow. You have the most fantastic character in this film. I think she really, you know, she steals the show. She oh, kicks ass and saves kind. the guys more than once. How was it coming onto a very male-dominated uh, film set? Was it a bit of a boys' club when you got there? It, it was a total boys club when I got there and you know frankly I'm a little bit used to that I have I tend to choose projects where I'm one of the few females on the project the benefit on this particular project of that is they had been filming for a year without any female infusion and so it was such a boys club that they were tired of staring at each other's hairy faces and smelling each other's stinky BO and they, they were like a woman you know, so I got all kinds of wonderful, I was lavished with generous attention and compliments and charm. Your character is not an original Tolkien character. Right. It is a Peter Jackson creation. Were you nervous about taking on that role in sort of that Middle-earth fandom that is very strong and maybe any potential backlash or just reaction from them? One of the advantages that I had coming into this role was I had worked on the show Lost for six years, which was an incredibly controversial show. And of course, the ending was the most controversial part. So I was used to being at the center of, of, of comic con fan debate. You know, those crazy, <laughs> yeah. rabid, excited, passionate geek fans. And I invite it. I really love it. I, I actually, it kind of gets me excited. It, it, it keeps, it keeps the blood flowing because I think there's nothing more disappointing than than being in a, per a performance that nobody pays attention to that nobody really cares about and you know when people start fighting about you <laughs> that they care and, and I'm a huge token fan so I applaud anyone who um, feels that it's important for them to defend Tolkien and his honor and his legacy, um, I would invite you, I would invite those fans to open their minds to what Peter's done because I think Peter's earned that in his representation of Tolkien's work in the past. And I actually think that he hasn't departed from Tolkien at all. In fact, I think he has represented him uh, impeccably in creating this character. Did you ever sort of sit down with Peter to discuss why he brought in this character, why he wanted her to be in the film? There were a lot of discussions about that, and, and they, of course, are ongoing because now we have to discuss it with the public. Um, and, and I think that, you know, one of the ones, one of the reasons that they began, they sort of led with, which is impressive to me, is that um, there was a time when it was acceptable to write a story where it doesn't feature a single female character. Um, that is not today. The, the subliminal message that is being sent out to everyone, not just little girls, uh, you know, women, is that we are irrelevant to the stories that human beings encounter, that we are not a part of heroic tales, that, that, that we have no part in life, essentially. And I was really impressed that that was the argument they led with. This is the 21st century, and we, can't, we cannot tell a story for nine hours where there's not a single woman in it, and I, I applaud that.